All right, good morning everybody. Bob KK4DIV and today we're out here in the front yard. We're getting ready for winter field day. I've got the antenna set up. We're going to get out some radio gear. So stay tuned and see what we have in store. Out here in the yard, we've got the, uh, the uh, soda beams fiberglass pole. We've uh, got the support driven into the ground and the soda beams link dipole laying out there. We're about to get this antenna set up. All right, folks, there's been some questions about how to set up your signal link with your uh, FT891. So uh, physically setting it up, it's really easy, and I'm going to go over that really quick. Uh, on the back of the signal link, uh, you have a couple of different ports. Uh, one is a radio port, and you'll need to get a cable that's specific to your radio, or in this case, it's a mini, a six-pin mini DIN. And that is good for uh, several different radios. Uh, the three Yezu radios I have, it uh, works with all of those radios. My FT450D, uh, my FT891, and my FT817 all use the same six pin mini DIN, which is really convenient. And I believe there's other, some other manufacturers out there that use the same six pin mini DIN. Uh, so what you'll do on the back of the signal link, you'll see there is a port that says radio. And uh, one end of this uh, cable uh, is an RJ45, and that's a you know like an ethernet cable something like that that plugs into the back of the signal link where it says radio and then the other end in this case for my 891 is a six pin mini den it looks something like that and there's two mini den ports on the back of the radio one of them uh, the closest to the uh, antenna jack is I believe it's a 10 pin and the one closest to the middle of the radio is that six pin mini den uh, you can't get it wrong, the jack will only plug into one um, because of the pin layout. Uh, and that's it, that's getting your signal link connected to the radio. A couple other things you'll need to do is get the signal link connected to the computer and that's just with a standard uh, USB A to B cable. Uh, so you've got the uh, USB port, it looks like something that you would plug into the back of your printer. And that goes into where it says USB on the signal link. And then the other end goes into an open port on your computer. The other thing I have done here on the back of the FT891 is I have this uh, USB cord plugged into the back. Again, that looks like your printer cable, and that's plugged in there so we can have a rig control uh, from the computer to the radio, and again, that's just plugged in to another uh, USB port. All right, folks, so to, like I said before, to set up your FT891 uh, with the signal link and going through all the men menus can be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, I kind of have to relearn this every time I do that. And that's the point of me getting out my radio every once in a while and what I call exercising my gear uh, so that I can uh, re-familiarize myself with it, especially if I'm going to be doing an activation or in this case, winter field day. I want to make sure that I've got all the bugs worked out and I uh, know how to do everything I need to know how to do before I get to the camp and uh, we're doing winter field day and then I have to learn it and what am I doing at that point I'm wasting time so uh, we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna show you how to get the menu set up we using your signal link so we've got it already all hooked up and we've got the radio turned on and powered on and we're on uh, 20 meters and we're connected to the, uh, the computer. So what you want to do uh, to get the SignalLink uh, audio part set up is press and hold your function key for a couple seconds and that will bring up the menu. And you'll scroll down until you get to the SSB section and that is uh, Menu 11-01 is where it starts. So it's, uh, I guess, the 11th heading in the menu. 
Uh, so uh, you'll see on here you've got a SSB low cut frequency uh, at 100 Hertz. Uh, slope is 6 dB. High cut frequency 3000 Hertz. Uh, slope is 6 dB. Uh, SSB mic select. Now what you'll want to do here is you'll want to change that to the rear. So you'll press your, uh, your multi-function knob for a second. Less than a second. Just a momentary press. It will highlight that menu and turn it to the right until it says rear. Now that will allow your audio to come out of an uh, input and output of your uh, uh, DIN to go through the signal link. Let's see, uh, or the uh, microphone to go through the signal link. The SSB out level, that's the audio out, is at 85. That's about where I like to run it. Uh, SSB BFO is auto. Push to talk select is D-A-K-Y. I like to say that's DACI. Uh, TXBPF um, bandpass filter, you can see uh, what that is. Uh, APF width contour level. I don't think I messed with any of these. Oh, that's scope stuff. That's scope stuff. Back to the uh, bandpass filter. Uh, so that's a really all you have to do is uh, really just change that microphone select to rear. We're going to press the momentary press on the function key. It takes us back out to the main screen. And that's how I have mine set up. Uh, other thing you'll want to do the other thing you'll want to do for uh, getting it to communicate with the radio, let's go back up here to the top, is uh, get your um, uh, cat information in there. So let's see if I can find cat, cat rate. Uh, you'll make sure you want to uh, have 38400 uh, or whatever you set it to to match on your, uh, on your computer uh, for whatever program you're using. So. Uh, on FL Digi, I have my cat rate set at 38400. Uh, cat uh, timeout time is uh, 1000 milliseconds. RTS is set to disable. And that's how I have my cat set up. Alright, I really don't think this is going to come out that well because of the glare on the screen. Uh, but we're just going to talk through it. And maybe I can... Uh, do this inside without a glare sometime in the future uh, in a little bit more detail. So to get your FL rig set up uh, in your config menu you'll want to go to setup and transceiver and uh, I'm using uh, FL rig version uh, 1.3.39 and that allows you to select your rig FT891. Uh, you'll have to check your COM port settings. And on this computer, I have two COM ports. And you, you can find those by doing device manager, doing a search for device manager on your computer. And uh, ports. So this radio actually has two COM ports. It's got an enhanced COM port, COM12 and a standard COM port, COM11. So uh, you want to use the enhanced COM port for your rig control, and we're using COM12. Uh, the baud rate is 38.400. Remember, we said you want to match your baud rate on your computer to your radio. Uh, you select one stop bit. Uh, the push to talk is via CAT, and it says, uh, uh, the RTS slash CTS I have a minus checked, although it is disabled on the radio menu. Uh, but I have it checked and it works. So guess what? We ain't messing with it. All right. So once you have that done, you'll also want to uh, go into FL Digi, which I'm writing FL Digi version 4.0.15. And you'll want to go in here to configure and rig control uh, using that menu. And uh, we're going to use uh, um, let's see, there should be something that says use FL rig. 
Actually, there's not. Forget I said it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, there it is. FL Rig. FL Rig is, there is an, a tab for FL Rig. FL Rig is the preferred method of transceiver control. See, like I said, I have to go through this stuff and kind of re-remember it uh, after a while, and that's why I exercise my radio. FL Rig push to talk keys modem, so that is checked. You'll also want to go to the audio tab on your FL Digi configuration and select your USB audio codec. Uh, for both microphone and speakers, that's going to be your Signalink USB audio. So you'll want to have that select so your computer will not be using its speakers and uh, onboard microphone uh, to uh, try to get uh, data to FL Digi. It's going to be pulling it from your Signalink. And that's how I have it set up. Simple as that. All right? Right. All right, folks, well, I was able to get out in the yard today and set up the equipment I'm going to be using for winter field day. I had the BioNO solar panel, 120 watt solar panel set up, the battery box with the BioNO 20 amp hour battery and the solar charge controller. I got the FT891. I've got the Z100 Plus uh, LDG auto tuner with the signal link, the uh, laptop, and I got that linked dipole the soda beans van hopper 20 30 40 meter link dipole got that set up with the telescoping uh, fiberglass mass and um, everything worked well it worked flawlessly I'm really pleased that everything did work as well as it did and I really didn't have to relearn that much so uh, just goes to show you guys if you get out your equipment every once in a while that equipment that might be in a go box that you, you, you kind of Put away in a corner and you might not use it that often you got to get it out every once in a while and and exercise it that's what i like to call it exercising your equipment so you can remain familiar with it if i didn't get this radio out every once in a while i would be completely lost this radio has a completely different menu system that i'm used to with my ft 450d my in my shack and my ft 817 that i use for qrp portable operating so it's a completely different radio with different functions and things like that. Menu system is completely different. So it's always beneficial to get your stuff out. And especially before an activation, a park on the air activation or a portable activation that you plan on doing, or in this case, winter field day, it's good to get everything out and get yourself re-familiarized with it. So uh, just a couple things I'd like to mention. Remember, I have a Patreon page. So if you get a chance, go over to Patreon. And if you feel so inclined, uh, donate a dollar per month to the channel that helps me keep things going and I'm able to buy new equipment and show things off and for my patreons that are already um, donating thank you so much I do appreciate it I don't thank you enough and I should but thank uh, the other thing is I've reopened my uh, Amazon affiliates program and uh, you'll see on some of my videos and some of my blog posts I'll have some links to some of the equipment I use and if you use those links in the uh, for Amazon affiliates, I get a little kickback if you end up buying something like that. So it's a, another way that uh, I'm trying to help support my channel and a, a way you can get some awesome equipment. All well. right, guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and end this video. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Remember, if you like what you see, please give this video a thumbs up, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, we'll say 73 for now. Until next time, folks, uh, next video will probably be my winter field day video uh, that I'll have out after shortly after winter field day. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching 73. Until next time, this is Bob, KK4DIV. Bye-bye.